Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener-supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. Become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com slash support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center, which is officially baby-friendly. This evidence-based initiative is designed to support mother-baby bonding and optimal infant feeding practices by upholding the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding. San Juan Regional Medical Center, officially baby-friendly and serving the Four Corners since 1910. Find out more online at sanjuanregional.com. This program on KSJE is supported by Citizens Trust and Investment Corporation, providing a competent, innovative, and caring team of professionals to serve wealth management, trust administration, employee benefit plans, retirement planning, and estate settlement needs. Find out more about Citizens Trust and Investment Corporation at 505 599 0181. Well, let me turn to my guest who is here with me this morning, patiently waiting for me to introduce him yet again. But Dr. Eugene Schmidt is here from Farmington Municipal Schools. Dr. Schmidt, good morning. Good morning to you, Scott, and uh, God bless all those service men and women. So. Indeed, for sure. And there's a lot of special <laughs> events going on to do just that in the next couple of days. But it's great to have you here to talk with me a little bit about Farmington Schools and some of the things that have been going on since we last spoke about a month ago. And so, Summer's going by quickly. Yes, I would say that there's probably more things to talk about than you have time to this radio show because there truly is a lot of things going on that we'd like to celebrate. And I, I always say that it is a pleasure to be part of a cultural beacon. I always want to be part of a cultural well, we're beacon. we're glad that you are part of our cultural <laughs> beacon. So uh, you keep us burning bright. So thank yes. you for being here. But there's a bunch of things on our list to talk about this morning, one of which is a uh, new logo, which we showed the old logo a few moments ago from uh, Farmington Schools, and that will be going away. Yes, and so I feel like it's kind of a unveiling on your show. So good for you. For, breaking news. Breaking news, for, everybody. For letting us I do love this. it. Yes, sir. The uh, For the last probably for eight to ten months, a committee of school staff and community has been studying possible options for a rebrand as we move into our new center, studying this and re-image the future of Farmington Municipal Schools. And so I want to talk a little bit about, about uh, the logo first. And so if I can have you go back a slide. You bet. We'll talk about rising to excellence in every pursuit. And so I want to kind of explain to the community what that means and why it means what it does. And sure. As, as we look to ideas, what we're trying to do is recognize that there are many different kinds of kids who have many different kinds of skill sets. And and academic proficiency is important, but so is artistic, so is athletic, so is, you know, the ability to weld or have a career. So we're looking to recognize all kinds of kids in the things that they do by rising to excellence in every pursuit. So, mm -hmm. so we want to honor all of the kids in our district and the, and I'll call them passions that they bring into the school that we recognize that whether it be the science competition, the National History Days, the speech, the debate, speaking a second language, all of those things have importance in our four corners. And so we want to recognize and honor all kids for that work. Okay. And so uh, within that rising to the perception, the, the listeners and viewers can see that rising has no limits. That, that term, that right? We that, just that get, concept. We, we just get to keep going and getting better. So, we we always can really get a higher standard for ourselves. And so, we would challenge our students and staff to think the same. And that rising, we we rise up every morning with the opportunity of having a wonderful day. We go to school with the intent of raising our excellence in in any of our pursuits. And so, we're really focused on doing lots of things. It lends itself, as you see, to um, communicating a message of 
that has resonance to our community and across the state. So Farmington will be rising to a better level, and we're excited about that. <clears throat> to give you an example about how we've been changing things over time, and, and I think this one's going to be hanging around for a while. That's, that's certainly my hope, but, right. but we've used taglines in the past like success matters every student every day. People will remember with fondness great schools for great communities, and we've also had raised the bar in excellence. And so in the short now, this is the start of my fifth year, where we are continuing to look for a messaging that resonates well and serves as a motivator for students and staff to rise to an even ever higher level. Right. And I think anybody in, in marketing or has tried to market or does marketing has realized kind of some of the, the challenges of trying to find a, a phrase, a statement that really encapsulates your mission, what you're achieving, and can be used in a variety of different ways. And that's what you hope this can can do. Yes, and so if we can go to the next slide, people will have an, an opportunity to there it is. see what... I've said a drum roll. I don't yes. have a drum roll. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but this is the new logo. I'll, I'll take just the comment as yes. the drum roll. But So this is what we will look like as you see our web presence, as you see the letters that you get from the school. You know, this will be on the backside of our business card. But, but even this honors the four corners. If you look at the colorations first, you're going to see that we really are choosing a deserty scene. There are tans and browns and, and looking at that, you can visually see bluffs and you can, the little blue across the front. If, if you're a listening audience, there's an image of a river right. as, as kind of the bottom of this. And, and I think the important focus in on this, they would see three silhouetted students, a small, medium, and big student with the big student obviously having the mortarboard diploma. Right. And so it visually sets in that four corners with desert sandstone and rivers, the theme that uh, Farmington kids will aspire to graduate. So uh, again, nicely done, rising to excellence in every pursuit gives us the opportunity really to to share. And then we can go on a little bit for one more. And and then this this is kind of the top of the little business card. Really, really pleased with how we're visually trying to present our school to the community as well as wherever these business cards travel. So Sure. And we see those colors again in just the text representation re repeated again in, in this version as well. Yes, we're, we're continuing that theme that people will see us as, as that desert we're proud to be living in the out of doors in the four corners. We, you know, we love the fact that we're the Tota, the three rivers of the, of the four corners. And so visually, I think it says we're going to get even better. Right. Well, congratulations. I know it's a, it's a big job to change the logos. I, I imagine, uh, Renee Lucero had a big hand in this to make this happen. Your uh, public relations person, and so uh, kudos to her. And uh, it looks it looks great. I think. Yes, yes, certainly. We want to thank Renee Lucero and the work that she has done, leading this effort to uh, visually and verbally rebrand our community. Right. Very good. And we want to talk a little bit about uh, the class of 2019 uh, that just graduated a little over a month ago. Yes, and so I wanted this is the like a five minute or 10 minute flashback yes. of when good things happen to a lot of good kids. Right. Um, Lots of reasons to celebrate. Yes. Farmington has been on a mission to meet or exceed the national graduation effort. And so we were very excited when a huge number of students graduated is actually going back to the early nineties. We had 684 students graduate. That is as of graduation day. Certainly there's also always a few kids that will graduate to follow over the summer. So right. this number will actually grow once we calculate in early August. But, but, but so far that number for this year was 684. Yes, and, and that's easily for those who don't see the video. 684 this year as compared to 523 just a year ago. And and just back in 2016, it was 498. So almost 200 more kids than just a couple of years ago went through the graduation line this year. 
And so we're, we're happy for the kids. You know, sometimes graduation is a struggle. Right, And right. Uh, I, I, I want to give a shout out because San Juan College, United Way, and others are such good partners. This story would not be possible without the work of people like Catherine Abeda, Nancy Shepard, uh, Gina Atencio, who is a staff member at uh, Farmington High School, um, really pushed a program called graduation coaches right and so we right. wanted to just give a shout out to them for helping those most at need last 35 kids make it to the graduation line so if we can go on i want to continue talking about these kids a little bit because when when you have good kids money follows and for this particular class the class of 19 2019 we have a what we call face counselors, financial aid, college eligibility, college entrance. Uh, years ago, the Marion Oil and Gas Foundation of Marion Family posted funding for the specific purpose of creating graduation counselors. And these people, Jillian Slendy, uh, Nancy Miskiel, many people remember Nancy, Natalie Stark, a lot of good people who really focused on trying to help kids get into college and get the money. The class of 2019, they received $18,708,472 in merit scholarships, $18 million plus. Wow. And as a contrast, right. just a year ago, the class of 18 received $14 million. And so it speaks to, again, the quality of the class as well as the number of scholarships that were distributed. And I think in this particular case, the ladies uh, who run the FACE program shared that 742 scholarships were issued to the class of 2019. That's an amazing number, 742. And certainly San Juan College is much appreciated for the bridge, the lotteries, and other kinds of things. So I'm glad you mentioned that, Dr. Schmidt. I was worried that the $18 million went to one student. Yes. So it got split up at least to about 740 of them. Yeah, there, so. there's a whole bunch of kids that have been the beneficiaries. Congratulations of this money. to all of them, sure. And we can see the numbers again on the screen of, uh, of, again, the numbers of scholarships that have gone up here over the last um, three years you brought with you. Today. Yes, yeah. For those, those people who don't have access to the monitors, 2017, we. Uh, kids received 574 scholarships last year, 605, this year, 742. And importantly, because we honored the military just moments ago. Yes, indeed. 93% uh, of this class has been accepted into a college university or has been in invited to um, join the military. So very, nice. very proud of this class. Very good. Well, congratulations again to them. And uh and to Farmington Schools, it shows, again, that uh, that rising theme all yes. the way through the program yep. today. Everything's so. rising. That's true. Very true. Well, very good. And uh, next, we want to talk a little bit about... Uh, yeah, I want to talk about uh, how San Juan College is a great educational partner. And I've chosen the example of just San Juan College High School. Later in the summer, I can bring you bigger data. But as an example of the importance of this partnership, San Juan College High School kids just this last year have accumulated 828 course dual credits. And, of course, all of these kids are working towards getting an AA degree. They're going to be one degree better than my other high school kids because right. they'll have the San Juan degree. But I'm also equally proud of how well kids do because these kids as high school age 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 are in classes with their adult peers. And for the class of 2020, um, 183 of those courses were A grades. Okay, and right. 129 B grades. That, that's just in the class of 2020. Kids who are 15 and 16 in that class of 2021 they had 123 A's and 85 B's. The class of 22, these kids are 14 and 15 in adult classes, got uh, 81 A grades and 31 B grades, actually 74 A grades. There you go. But, but a remarkable number of kids kids being successful in an adult world and so you know 
good for San Juan College for being such a true partner to public education and allowing these kids. Now, when I come back probably in July, I'll give you the thousands because between Piedra Vista and Farmington High, well over 2,400 dual credit courses were taken. So it's a tremendous infusion of knowledge and uh, we are the beneficiaries of that for our kids who are rising to excellence in every pursuit. There you go. And, uh, and as you mentioned, it's a great partnership and a great opportunity for these uh, students to take these dual credit courses because they would transfer then on to um, other colleges or universities when these students, if they choose to go on to uh, higher education, correct? Yes. Yeah, so the nice part about that is that these kids who choose to work beyond an AA do have the opportunity because San Juan College has great partnerships with uh, UNM, New Mexico State, Eastern, which is Portales, Western out there at Silver City, certainly Fort Lewis, and because I know that that you're interested in expanding your listening audience up That's to right. the Durango, but Fort Lewis is certainly a nice extension. But uh, but a lot of kids literally could stay at San Juan College through extended learning from other four-year institutions to um, get their BA. So sure. there's never enough education going on. Well, and for mom and dad, it's my understanding, if I'm not mistaken, that isn't the cost um, of, a, of the college, college classes free? Yes. For, yes. for mom and dad, so. Yes, yeah, we, we've estimated, and this is Principal Don Lorette from San Juan College High School. Uh, he had um, demonstrated that a San Juan College high school and San Juan College Diploma represents $30,000 in scholarships that uh, a student could achieve in two years. And so we're looking for, I'm going to say May 15th, next year, 2020, is when the first cohort of graduates will get their high school and their college diploma from San Juan, May, May 15, 2020. Very exciting. From San Juan College High San School. San Juan College High School. So the first graduating class of uh, Go Griffins. Yes. So there you, there you go. Which is which is why we're kind of in a purplish lavender I see why you got today. the purple. Well, there, I like it. I like it very much. Um, also, uh, some of the other things going on, you've got uh, some of the maintenance and uh, construction projects. A country club project has yes. been uh, underway, correct? Yes. Country Club is just about about a $7 million systems improvement or renovation. That systems progress is underway. It will be completed by probably December-ish of 2020, but we're in the process of doing a complete remake inside the building. So good for them. I did want to share with the community that the importance of student safety, that we're in the process of another $400,000 worth of school security safety cameras and thing upgrade over the summer. We'll also be doing some additional work in partnership with the state. So we always like to leverage other people's money. Sure. So we did get a $62,000 school safety grant, but we're going to spend from our bond monies another 400000 to continue to improve the quality and the visibility of of what is going on in our campuses that I think will become more of an active deterrent from from something not good happening in our district. Right. And you mentioned maybe more cameras and things that can be monitored by some security folks and yes. office folks and things like that, I guess. Yeah. And so on that, we're having some nice conversations with Mayor Duckett about what would next year's school resource officers look like. So that's that's a story yet to be told. Okay. But, uh, but I did want the community to know that there's never enough school safety and that uh, we are committed to making the lives of every student and staff member safe when they're on our campuses. And we've talked a little bit about how some of those things have been built into some of your newer school buildings as they've been constructed, and maybe some of this is trickling down to some of the other schools now as, as well? Yes, yeah, certainly the community is aware that goes to our schools that there's double locking doors and you have to be buzzed into the district. You have to produce valid identification so we can do a quick state patrol check. Um, you know, certainly we have upwards of six school resource officers as well as school security staff. But I think the biggest thing is we just have the eyes and ears of students and staff who are who really are quite good at if you see it reported. And, right. And that brings up the partnership with the city, as you mentioned, with the school resource officers. And that, again, it's a great uh, ongoing partnership, I think, between Farmington Schools and the Farmington Police Department. Yes, yeah, certainly uh, Mayor Duckett and the council understand the importance 
of protecting our kids. And so we appreciate Chief Hebby as they build their budgets. They try to make school safety a part of their commitment to the community as well. So we're always very pleased with the recognition by the city council, by mayor, by uh, and certainly manager Rob Mays, but Chief Hebby as well, that school safety is an ongoing, ever-going kind of thing. And getting those officers in the schools, I think, too, gives them some ears on the ground, if you will, to kind of hear if things are going on or if there's stuff that's happening that they can maybe be aware of and, and react swiftly. Yes, I, I always look at it as when the police are visible, good people stay good. And uh, the as you're describing as well, we're interested in building relationships. You know, the, the police we meet on the street, they, those people are our friends. And it gives the kids to see the police in a light that we can go to them when we are in a position of need, whether it be in the school or from the home. And so I think that it does a lot to cement that relationship that, that uh, we are here to protect and serve, as they say. Right. The other thing I want to ask you about, Dr. Schmidt, is uh, you have a new office. Yes, and, and thank you for bringing that one up. Is is We're pleased to share with the community that that uh, more than 130 staff who have been located all across the town are now housed in the first and fourth floor of what we are calling, in partnership with the college, the 30th Street Education Center. Previously Hillcorp, previously other kinds of right. oil company names. That's but, right. But now it's the 30th Street Education Center, and we are a one-stop shop that I think that we've always wanted to be. So we are open for business. We welcome the public coming in to see what we're doing. It's still kind of a construction in progress. Right. But uh, people are moving in. The boxes are out of the halls now, and, and people are learning to live in – a really a glassed environment that I, I think that the efficiency of having everybody in one site will be very pleasing to the town. Don't have to guess where to go to get a central office service anymore. Right. Come to the 30th Street. And and this will be important maybe as school revs up again in, in August for folks, maybe for enrollment or things like that. They need some services that are now all in one spot. Yes. And, and as an example, uh, students qualifying for special education services, our diagnosticians, our speech therapists, physical therapists, or there are people who are interested in getting a school waiver to go from one resident zone to another would come to central office. People who um, are interested in funding their kids' meals right. and different kinds of things. So there's a lot of reasons to come to central office, and we welcome you. Very good. And that means, too, I guess, phase two of this would be the uh, divestiture of some of the other office space that the district has had throughout the town to uh, put that on the market, I guess, or uh, see yes. what you can do with that. Yes, and that certainly is our plan. People who are familiar with the old central office know that there's a 20th Street complex. There's also the what used to be the central office on Destin and 20th. So we are looking to, as you say, divest those properties will be placed up for sale. We're in the process of, uh, we've submitted requests for proposals from area realtors who may be interested in helping us sell those properties. And so the community can look forward to the sale of those properties in the next years. And in the process of that, that money will go back into future construction funds for our schools. And so we're going to reinvest through the sale of that property. Very, very interesting. Okay. And uh, and you mentioned, of course, that the 30th Street Education Center, that's a building you will now share with San Juan College. And I think San Juan College is still doing some work on their floors in that building. And so they haven't really moved in as much as you have. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Dr. Pendergrass and the vision that she is setting for partnerships with public education because it's fun having literally a pre-K through 20 uh, focus on education. It it breaks that myth about education stops at high school. You know, education goes on and on. So the use of the second and third floor in partnership with the college, we, we will see them looking to promote adult basic education and higher learning with a lot of our, of our New Mexico partners. And so the, co the college has really done some nice visionary work as to what education could look like in the future by sharing one site. Right. And again, another great 
uh, story of partnership with the mm-hmm. two entities as well. Uh, before we run out of time, Dr. Schmidt, I know uh, we want to talk a little bit about some of the openings for teachers that you have in the school district from retirements or what have you. And you're getting some help from maybe an unlikely source that folks might be surprised to hear, the Mayor of Farmington. Yes. I um, want to give a shout out to Mayor Duckett. Um, he, along with an interest from Jack Fortner, who represents the county commission, right. we are looking at a way to promote teacher apprenticeships. I currently have about 35 openings. Um, the closer we get to the start of school, the more likely those will be filled with second career alternative licensure. In this case, we're looking to do an outreach to displaced or potentially unemployed workers because of the events going on west of us at the power plant and the coal mines. And so we're looking for ways to bring in second career people in a fast track. And so this this partnership with uh, with Mayor Duckett and certainly uh, Jack Fortner is that how can we get money from economic solutions, um, the state monies, right. to fund a program to allow first-year teachers to fast-track their licensure to a year. And so, so that's an interesting, it's a stay tuned, but it's, it's, it's important that they have captured the vision that finding displaced workers within our community and inviting them into the school is a real opportunity. Think for a second. Um, I'm hoping to fill 15 positions through this. 15 positions their salaries for one year would be $799,500. If I can fill those 15 positions, the last ones that probably we'll be ending with. Right. What an economic boom that is for our town to have that new infusion of dollars or spending power through the voice of our mayor and, and what the, I think, I'm hoping the county commission can do to help support this. Interesting. And this is a bit different than what we already are familiar with, the alternative licensure program here at San Juan College. It's just a faster way to get these individuals maybe into the classroom as an apprentice yes. before they become a full-fledged teacher. Is that the idea? Yes. And importantly, to San Juan community and those attending San Juan, we probably have 40 or more teachers in a two-year program. Right. Um, This is a new idea that the state is trying to pilot around. the. In fact, Las Cruces is probably about six months ahead of us in this design. But uh, our partnership with the college will continue to be solid in terms of using them as a resource for alternative licensure. But this is another way to, so how do you capture those last couple in a hurry? Right. Interesting. Well, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. And again, another great uh, story of partnership, I think, with the city and the the county. Yes. To to fill some of these needs and maybe some other districts may benefit as well. Yeah, certainly um, we'll be talking to our Four Corners neighbors and say, let's look at this as an opportunity and you know, maybe a year or two, we can revisit this with the college as well and, and uh, you know, do more to think about how that process works. Very good. Dr. Schmidt, always a pleasure. Thank it you is. for being here. One final look at the new logo, everybody, before we go. But there it is, rising to excellence in every pursuit. The new uh, tagline, mission statement, yes. I guess, of the Farmington Municipal School District. And you'll be seeing this image uh, in a lot of places. Uh, yep, kind of our very own jolt your journey. There you are. So uh, maybe a hashtag yep. is next. I'll get, get Renee working on that, <laughs> see if you can do that. But terrific. Dr. Schmidt, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming in. Okay, Scott. Thank you. You bet. Dr. Eugene Schmidt, Superintendent of Schools with the Farmington School District, my guest here on KSJE. And I'll be back with more in just a moment, everybody. The time right now is 8.40. This program on KSJE is supported by Citizens Trust and Investment Corporation, providing a competent, innovative, and caring team of professionals to serve wealth management, trust administration, employee benefit plans, retirement planning, and estate settlement needs. Find out more about Citizens Trust and Investment Corporation at 505-599-0181. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center, which is officially baby-friendly. This evidence-based initiative is designed to support mother-baby bonding and optimal infant feeding practices by upholding the 10 steps to successful breastfeeding. San Juan Regional Medical Center, officially baby-friendly and serving the Four Corners since 1910. 
Find out more online at sanjuanregional.com. Did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.